How do you approach their quarterback situation, not really knowing for sure who it is? Well, the most part, it's the same plays. Um, uh, Ten's playing now. Um, the other, uh, I think 16 is Ertz, one that's been there forever, and then five's the other guy. And I, I understand that they have were injured or are injured. I don't, I don't know what the situation is, but all we can do is, is go off what's on tape and, and prepare. And um, you know, you got to stop the run with them, and then you got to, def- you know, rally and defend the pass with you know quarterback run RPOs and such. Um, and and just try to be sound. Make sure you're in a gap. You know they do a lot of pulling, play with fullbacks and tight ends. Try to get a gap advantage. Um, defeating the quarterback runs never easy. So uh, you got to rally to it and 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 make plays and uh, do a good job of reading high hat, low hat, and defending the RPO system. Oh, I, I don't think there's any question that he's been as uh, as big an impact at Kansas State as any coach that's ever coached in college football based on where they started and where he's taken them to. And, um, you know, I, I've always said this. I think that um, even though he's a Hall of Famer, which he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, coaches um, can coach at certain schools and have an advantage. And then some coaches make their advantages with the commitment and, and what they put into that university. And he's a perfect illustration of that for what he's done there. Um, that's an outsider looking in, uh, and, and I'm sure they would probably feel the same way, the administration there, and the impact that he's made on that university and that state over the period of time that he's done it. Pretty huge, I would say.